On today's episode, we talk with a man who attempts the Crown King Scramble double. Starting off the race was a pretty big success. It was the 25th running. We had a new men's course record. Chris Vargo, Team Nike Trail, ran a 347, eclipsing a 20 year old course record set back in 1996 by Dermot, uh, this guy from Scotland. And the previous record was four hours and he beat it by 13 minutes, so it was really exciting. Uh, we also had uh, his girlfriend, Alicia Shea, run. Uh, four hours, 34 minutes, and was just about 20 seconds shy of Ann Trayson's course record set back in 2002. So it was really just a great, great weekend. Um, we actually have our Crown King recap video ready, and we're going to play just a quick 30 second intro of that for you guys right now. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And just a quick side note, registration's already open for next year's event, April 1st, 2017. So go check it out. It's up on Ultra Sign Up and on our website. So we are very excited to have our guest, Thomas O'Reilly, here with us today. He's an Aravipa ambassador, and he also towed the line this last weekend. And if you tuned into our episode two trail talk, we got a question from Thomas, <laughs> and that question was, uh, has everybody, anybody ever run the double, um, either start before the Crown King uh, race and run down from Crown King to Lake Pleasant or run the race and returned back to the start? That was my question that I posted. And I found out that no one has successfully done it, and uh, I am a victim of that also. So yeah, Kate Hansen in that episode was talking about how she hadn't heard of anyone doing it, and so, uh, I didn't find out until packet pickup, but that you were planning on doing this. But like, had you been thinking about this for a while? Uh, it was um, something I was kind of comparing it to almost a Grand Canyon double. Uh, the way the, the elevation profile was and everything, I thought it's a local something fun to do, something different. And the one thing I really like doing most of all is uh, running at night. Just I thought starting at night, I could cover the first 50k alone and carry enough nutrition and water to make it, and then run with the race and have aid stations uh, supply me the rest of the way back up to the uh, Crown King and my car and my food that was gonna be waiting for me. Yeah. So that's where uh, the fun started. I uh, started at uh, Crown King about 9.45. Um, PM, like the PM. night before the race. Yeah, the night before the race. I had my pack, uh, all water, nutrition set with me. I was even carrying a, a medium pizza in the back of my uh, carried a pizza like a folded up or what I put two <laughs> two slices per bag and I folded them up put them in the back of the pack and as I was rolling down there I had napkins and pizza to go it's one of the things that I know I can stomach it's not a goo it's nothing that I have to preheat I had them in the fridge all day before so I know it's nice and cold and the temperature at night uh, 9 45 10 o'clock got down into the 40s around midnight and as I was working my way down it kept the uh, temperature kept dropping so you didn't have there were no aid stations set up at no this aid point. stations did you I didn't drop any water no water but I, there I mean the creeks were flowing but you didn't pull nope, from the I, rivers or anything. I had a pack that's got uh, 64 ounces of water on the back and two 24 ounce bottles on the front so I had about 110 ounces of water with me with one additional 20 ounce bottle in the back plus the pizza, plus all my other fun stuff. Okay, so your plan was to start, you started around 10 o'clock. Was that about when you wanted to start? I was giving myself the unknown because uh, the only way I was gonna navigate was via the GPS on my watch because all the markers and everything you guys set up was for the way up. Okay, and we're, they're not reflective or anything. They're not reflective and there are a few spots where there's a few turnouts and I have never run the down and conversely, I've never run up either. Okay, so, so you had never done the race before? No. Okay. So I thought, 
you know, before I get to a turn where I don't know where to go, since you guys weren't planning for anybody to be crazy, I figured use the watch and just roll on. I made one one wrong mistake and I went about a quarter mile down. Watch told me I was off course. Turned around, came back. Okay, so you were planning to like run down and get there just before the early start, or did you were you hoping for like a down period? Originally, I was hoping to get there right before the early start. I had uh, some guys that were running the uh, later race that were going to meet me and have some fuel for me, some water and some food, and I was going to take off again at five. But I had a few glitches along the way uh, that uh, I got in about six, uh, 525. So I lost 25 minutes on my plan to 45 minutes on my plan. Um, so the like, first, first glitch was <laughs> uh, I smelt a skunk, then I saw a skunk. Slowed down just for the first wildlife uh, incident of the night. Didn't want to be sprayed with a skunk and run through the night uh, smelling like a skunk. That wouldn't have been good. Yeah. Second glitch was the uh, markers on the 1Y about four miles out. There's a turn for some residences that are out there. And I figured, well, that's the way to go because I didn't see anything. I didn't see any streamers. And I went right. I should have gone left. So that was about that half hour that I lost right there. Yeah. Well, maybe 20 minutes that I lost right there. So what was it like out there? You know, you're alone in the dark. You know, the course is fairly remote. You're out in the mountains. I mean, you know, a lot of us know the race from the daytime and it's, well, there's a lot of camaraderie and a lot of people, but I mean, what, what is it like out there? Zero cell reception, zero ambient light. Turn off your headlamp and you can see the stars, the best that you've, I've ever seen them ever. Wow. The moon was incredible, the stars were incredible, and the wildlife at night comes alive. It was, that was very, very impressive. Um, about uh, five, seven miles in, I saw a pack of javelinas. I saw some coyotes. And then right after Fort Misery, which was another um, stumble because of that construction site, I didn't know how to navigate through the construction site because they had their signs up to say, yeah. beware of dog. And I said, if they're crazy enough to leave their dog out all night, then I don't want to be cutting through their spot. And I've, wound up doing what I asked myself, what would Jamil do? I just followed the creek and figured the creek's gonna come back up to the other side where the trail was and inevitably I found it. So that was right near the active mine. Right there, near the mine. active mine in yeah. the middle of the race. But I didn't know that that was out there so I just went for it and kept moving forward. That mm -hmm. was the key. Don't stand still because stand still is not a good thing to do. So right after that, about two miles after that, I had the most exciting uh, event of the night. Came around the corner and there's a high bank and I'm looking, you know, sweeping the course as I'm working my way down uh, with my headlamp and I saw a set of eyes up in the air on the hot top of this bank and slowed down, looked, and it was a mountain lion, full grown mountain lion staring back down at me. Whoa. Freaked me out. It, I mean, I've run, in, where I run up north, uh, north Phoenix area, I get coyotes and javelina and bobcats quite often. No mountain lions. Uh, so I didn't know what to do. I had read about them and it says, slowly back up retreat because their natural thing is to stalk you so i my goal was to continue forward so solomon pack comes with a whistle pulled the whistle out started clapping screaming yelling jumping up and down he didn't move well i slowly got up to the edge of the trail and slowly worked my way past him watching him the entire time and then kept going and i think that was my fastest mile of the night after wow. i passed yeah him. i mean what was your adrenaline just pumping it like, was pumping were you scared I w for the next mile <laughs> I, I don't know what I was thinking and uh, it was crazy and I was thinking well nobody in the world knows where I'm at so my next investment is going to be a spot I ran without a spot nobody in the world would know where I was if that mountain lion had got me nobody would know where to find the body afterwards so that was kind of made me realize that there's some serious serious business going on out there mm. um, after the mountain lion event my hearing started going uh, or so I thought Huh. Um, the altitude difference between Crown King and Lake Pleasant, we start losing out elevation. Even though over the course where you're dropping from Crown King to Lake Pleasant, you still gain 3,500 feet of elevation gain. Uh, my ears were filling up, you know, like we were popping on a plane, but I, I ran with a external um, speaker powering my, iP my iPod was uh, powering an external speaker. I wanted to put out some ambient noise just so those guys, the mountain lions, javelinas, bobcats, and all that would know that I'm coming. Uh, I didn't want to surprise anybody. And, I, and that was kind of cool, but the volume on it was dropping over time. And I didn't realize that my ears were getting that pressure. 
Oh, yeah. So finally I cleared my ears and said, wow, my music's really loud all of a sudden. <laughs> I thought I was losing it because, you know, you've read about these things and people lose this. Hallucinations, middle of the night, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm thinking, I'm still the only guy out here all by myself. So um, as I cruise along, further down the hill, there was a guy sleeping in the back of his pickup truck, on the bed of the pickup truck. And it was a spot where he had a, a little bit of... Um, turns I saw the pickup truck down below and as I got there he pops his head out what the heck are you doing he says and I said I'm running to Lake Pleasant he goes you're the only guy out it's here like you're in nuts the <laughs> are you okay you have everything I said yeah I'm good and we just I just kept rolling and then as I was approaching uh, Lake Pleasant the neatest part of the whole night was uh, the, the moon was out and it was shimmering on the, the lake oh wow very incredible I mean one of the most spectacular things I saw the whole thing besides the mountain life um, Throughout when the night, I was just uh, eating my pizza, drinking my water, moving forward, knew where I was, because my uh, watch was telling me I only had eight, seven, six, five miles to go, which was pretty cool. I rolled into the start, or my finish, the start of the race, about 5.25, refueled, and ultimately that I should have turned right back around and headed right back out. Um, hung out with my buddies, they got me all set, ready to roll back up, and um, took off with the race start, the six okay. o'clock. So you start. saw some, the early start, you probably saw those Oh yeah, I cheered them all by. on. I said, hey, good job, yeah. good job. And they were looking at me like, we're, you're supposed to be going you're this way. Like I said, no, I'll be there up. in a little bit. <laughs> they didn't understand that I had been running all night long. So that was pretty cool. That was pretty fun. And so you just set off with the normal- Six o'clock crew, yeah. Okay. And I slowly fell off, not towards the back right away, but slowly just fell off, just because I'm at that point, 35 miles, 36, 37 miles into my day. Which, and you just ran through the whole night. Ran through the whole night. Not only that, I woke up at 3.30 in the morning on Friday morning, took my dogs for our normal four mile run. Okay. Then I went to work, uh, I'm a FedEx guy, I worked for uh, eight and a half hours, got home, packed my bag, and then just drove directly to Crown King. Ran Crown King, did all that fun, and then once I dropped at uh, mile 15 on the way back up, because I missed the cutoff time for the race, I helped uh, break down all the aid stations, the whole way up in the caravan, um, jeeps that i was in figure why not volunteer i'm here anyway so you missed the cutoff at mile 15 in the actual race in the actual race that you know i didn't get a finish time because i had to drop but i'll get it next time and there will be a next time not with a race but i've already started recruiting some people to to do it okay so the first attempt you you ran all the way down from crown king and then about halfway back up uh and it sounds like there was another runner that also attempted uh, we tried to get him on the show today, couldn't get a hold of him, but right, he was do you know going, much about yeah, his attempt? He was going to attempt it, but uh, I think he was running late, and he never made it to Crown King the night before for the uh, run down. Okay. So I think I was the only person that uh, set out on the uh, trail that night. Oh, okay. And um, in the future, I think I would do it differently. I would start earlier in the night, where I would be going back north earlier to keep it cooler the whole way, even though we had a cool race day. It could get rather hot out there in the desert and without any aid right, that's the big plan the unknown is where to place your aid I think at mile 15 makes perfect sense for a round mm -hmm. trip logistically and then I've thought a few other options maybe turning it into a Lake Pleasant Crown King to Bumblebee mm -hmm. and get picked up at Bumblebee or Lake Pleasant Crown King to what's that a station on the Black Canyon 100k that comes right down at the bottom of the hill. It's like Hidden Treasure Mine. Hidden Treasure Mine. Then turn around there and go back to Lake Pleasant and that would turn it into a 100 mile race. <laughs> Just a crazy zany distance because you can use the Crown King General Store as an aid station mm -hmm. and leave something at mile 15. Maybe even eat at the saloon and then continue on down your way. So that's another option for another day so what, where did this idea pop into your head originally like why why the crown king double why why would someone want to do this well i don't know i just thought the crown king double sounded like fun i like to run at night why not try it uh why not be different you know it's uh i'm not going to be the fast guy in the front i'm not going to be typically the guy in the back i'm going to be right in the middle so i might as well make a fun day out of it and yeah. why not give it a try you know, you don't have to finish every race, but you can have an adventure along the way. And that's what I was really planning for. Something fun, something different. Yeah, it's really neat. Well, thanks for sharing your story with us. Thanks for letting me. That concludes our interview with Thomas regarding the Crown King Double. Stay tuned for our post show.
So uh, what inspired you? Uh, the inspiration came from uh, just setting out on a journey. More, and it timed right with the race. Um, the fact that the two could work together and I could use the aid stations on the way back was kind of nice. To do a long 100K run by yourself without setting out all the logistics would be a little bit difficult. Um, I've done some zany things in the past. Uh, three years ago, I ran every street in my town over the course of the year. I've run... Uh, what does that mean, every street in your town? Uh, like you map, you I, took a map and just started highlighting? And I went to the local real estate office and got a map of the town. And every night, I knew where I ran. And that, started highlighting them all off. A uh, town of Anthem, Arizona. Okay. Uh, every street in the town. Even <laughs> when they added new streets, I ran them all. And I knew where I left off because I chalked the street at night. And I started right there again and ran some more streets. And then I have a zany idea of going and running the entire zip code. Uh, I found some newspaper articles of other guys doing it across America, running the entire zip code, every street and road, dirt trail in the zip code. It's an idea. And then um, I ran every day uh, 10K a day for one entire year. Um, that was pretty tough and fun because when you're on vacation and stuff, I still did it every day. Uh, the, one of the crazier things I did is I was on um, spring break vacation in San Francisco with my family. I looked out the hotel room and I said, the Golden Great Bridge doesn't look too far. Had my pack, running shoes and gear, took off. I didn't realize it was 17 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> I ran there, touched the Golden Gate Bridge, ran halfway across it, turned around, and I had to run back. Did so you run all the way back? I ran or? all the way back. Oh, wow. You didn't get a ride <laughs> No, I didn't get a ride. Wow. Uh, I thought that'd be kind of fun. And... That was interesting, and I've met different people online and just met up with them when I'm on vacation. And uh, one story, I went to Thousand Oaks, California on our way to Big Sur and met a guy on the side of the freeway at the hotel that we were staying at, and I never met him physically before that. And we just met at the lobby, and we went out for a six, seven-mile run it was going to be. Three hours later, we came back. My wife was just about to call the police and wonder where the heck I went with this guy, <laughs> but all I knew was his name, and that was it. So. so it sounds like, I mean, do you like adventure type runs more than races or are you like a healthy mix of them? Uh, adventure. I like anything. Uh, another thing that I do is I do a Friday night uh, group trail run on uh, with our headlamps. Just get the guys out there, get them ready for all the night races, Ragnars, all the other fun stuff. Uh, and uh, I usually do that every Friday night at a different uh, trail around town. Uh, we have anywhere from 4 to 12, 15, 20 people show up, hang out, just drink and... Relax. Where do you guys typically do those runs? Uh, we do them up in the North Valley, but uh, this year we're going to uh, rotate from different parks. Uh, parks typically close. We come out, play, have some good times. And uh, it's a great time to get everyone out there. We break down into like two to three mile sections, let everybody catch back up, because running at night, like we talked about last week, is a whole different animal compared to running during the day. Yeah. And it really freaks a lot of people out. They, they, they're not sure about the worrying about the snakes, the heat, everything else. So that's kind of fun. That's one of the things that I really like to do. Is that something you want to like, uh, like let people know how to find out about it, or do you kind of keep it just to your local friends? Oh, anybody in the Valley is more than welcome. How can uh, they find out more information? Uh, they can find out more information by uh, joining our uh, Facebook page, our uh, AZ Trail Leggers uh, Facebook page. Uh, find me on there. You're going to uh, link my information on yeah. there. And send me a message. I'll get you into our group, and you can uh, see all our posts, all of our schedules. We do a, a Friday night run. A Sunday morning run every Sunday at different parks around the valley. And Saturdays is pretty much free for all, but we go all over. All over. Uh, this weekend we have the Friday run, a Saturday uh, Maricopa Trail run, and Sunday we're doing um, uh, Dixie Mountain, uh, doing the whole all the uh, summits there. Oh, neat. So we, every week we have something different. Cool. That's good. All right, well, thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Jamil, for having me. Okay. Good? Are you know. married? Yeah. You said, so you just want to get away from your wife, is pretty much. <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 I want to run every street in my neighborhood. I've been with my wife since high school, a uh, long, long neighbor. time. No, but it started off uh, years ago. The real running thing started off. My daughter came home from junior high school, and I didn't really run much. I, even though I'm a FedEx guy and I'm running around, um, she did a mile, and I'll say, you know, it was ten minute mile in junior high school, sixth grade or whatever, seventh grade. And my wife says, "Can you beat her?" I don't know, I, you know, I'm a FedEx guy, I ride my bike, I run a little bit. So I went down to the, the track that weekend and, and ran it. And no, I didn't beat her. She beat me. So I said, all right, give me 30 days. So then I started running every night. And I found a, like a one mile loop around my house and I just kept going out, going out. 
slowly got, you know, brought the time down. And I said, all right, I can beat her now. And my wife says, okay, go farther. <laughs> Keep going. And she doesn't get the whole allure of um, running really far. I did the Ironman thing, you know. I, and I was just as crazy with that. I did one sprint triathlon. I didn't do an Olympic. I didn't do a half. I went right to a full Ironman next. And same thing with the trail running. I did one uh, 35K, and then I started going 50K and trying to go farther. Still haven't completed my first 100 miler, but I'm still having a blast out there. Yeah. And I think that's more my personality. You know, I could care less if I ever finish one, but if I go out there and give it a try or support somebody, that's, that's another goal I have this year is to volunteer at least at one event per month, and it doesn't always have to be with the Air Viper tribe. Yeah. It's next weekend I'm volunteering someplace else, and I'm volunteering here. Get out and just, all these events don't happen if somebody else doesn't come out and volunteer their time. That's like last year, I think, you know, that's the reason I won the Hurt thing, because I had the most tickets in the, in the bucket yeah. to win that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got that opportunity mm -hmm. to go there and meet that group of people. Yeah. And that was incredible. Well, I love your attitude. I mean, it's just, yeah, it really speaks to um, just who you are, and, and that's, that's really neat. That's the key. And the other thing yeah. that I really want to do is uh, you talk about the safety patrol. Yeah. That's been on the back mm -hmm. of my mind. Because well, wanna... you saw him out there this yeah. year. I think, yeah, like a race like Havilene 100 would just be perfect. Just have a couple people out there looping around. Because I was almost contemplating running Havilene this year, and then I said, well, if I run it, I can't head up the safety patrol that I really wanted to do. <laughs> and then I was like, well, this is a great time. I can actually have Jamil for a, by himself for a few minutes. I was going to offer to uh, take over that part of the race oh. off you if you want yeah. to not have so to worry So it would be like the it. safety patrol captain? Yeah. If you're, if that would be amazing. Then you don't have to worry about I'd it. I'd love that. So recruit people. I'll recruit Let's people. come up with a plan too. like Because we probably want to stagger teams in like different directions yeah. and times. Maybe come up with a schedule. Yeah. Because I'm not and running like, it this year, but I have okay. some friends that are coming. I had uh, yeah. eight people come in from Colorado last year that ran it. Okay. And... Uh, I have some other guys that are coming into the town, and my tent's going to be packed. I've already got five out of the eight positions in my eight-man tent full, and now I'm not <laughs> even including me because I don't plan on sleeping. So, yeah, it, it's a party. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, the safety patrol is where it's at.